Hi everyone, welcome to Exchange Prescriptor. Uh, this is a case presentation to. In this video, we are going to discuss again one case. Uh, thanks for uh, showing awesome response in last video. Uh, really motivated us to uh, do this video. Guys, I have one case sheet in my hand. So as we did last time, I'll give a basic introduction or intro about the patient. So you can ask as many questions as possible. We'll get into diagnosis slowly. After getting every information, we'll explain to them. One 22 year old male came with the complaints of uh, lower back stiffness, neck stiffness, leg and ankle producing a lot of noise and sounds. It was disturbing him and he feel uneasiness and mainly the back and neck pain stiffness along with the pain. This was his major complaint. He came and met me. Only I give information about the patient, the age and uh, what was the complaint, basic complaint. And you can ask me the question as much as possible. So the disturbing sounds uh, on the leg, which side is this? Bilateral. He said bilateral. How um, many days he is having this pain? It was a chronic, actually past two years he having this issue. What was the intensity of the pain when he came? Intensity of the pain, he complained 8 out of 10. That was a surprising fact for me as well. But he was uh, highly normal, looks like. He was talking uh, very nicely. And he was very young, as we discussed, 22 year old male. And, uh, and I, I asked him if someone complains of pain 8 out of 10, it will be more severe. And I showed the scale of 0 to 10, it will be more severe. And you are very normal looking like to me. So is that truly you have a pain 8 out of 10 or, or not? I asked. I explained the, about the pain and I asked. And he said, so stiffness, I can say 8 out of 10. Pain, it was low, but both is mixed to me. So more of a stiffness, I can say, not a pain. Is there any past medical history? So if a young fellow and I asked him, he didn't have any history like injury also. What was his occupation? Uh, just completed. For example, uh, 24, 22 years I said. Na? 22 years old, uh, 2 years back uh, pain. Finally, at college, finally uh, the patient had a pain. Now he is not working. Uh, he was in home. He was searching for higher education and other curriculum to improve his knowledge and working somewhere. Uh, did the neck pain and shoulder every pain started continuously and simultaneously or it was first he experienced neck pain then shoulder pain? No, first he experienced lower back stiffness and then he felt the neck pain. But it's not a big gap between that. He said two weeks or three weeks gap maximum he felt the neck pain too. What about the previous physical activity status? Uh, previous physical activity status as soon as uh, after this pain last two years he was highly sedentary. Before that, he was said, I'm going to the gym, I'm, I, I was an active person, I'm doing this stuff, running and everything. But we don't know how much he did, the context, after two years we are assessing. Just we have to assess him by what he said. Maybe it can be biased from the person internal uh, feedback. Example, if you ask someone about the physical activity, you have to be very careful. No one say, I'm not active. Even though they do walking weekly once also, they say, I'm walking, week, walk, walking, I'm, I'll go walking. And uh, they may have visited the gym three months back once. And they say, I did gymming and all. I had experience. This is a usual uh, complaint. This is for you guys, I'm explaining. This usually patients say, you have to be specific past three months. If you're asking previous physical activity state to the person, you have to be very specific. Past three months, what was your physical activity state? How many days a week you do aerobic training? How many days a week you do strength training? This is very specifically you have to ask to the person. What was the aggravating factor? Uh, aggravating factor of the pain, he said, rest and sitting feels uh, more pain. Did he have any night pain from sleep disturbance? No, no sleep disturbance, uh, no night pain. Is there any relieving factor that you have? No, relieving factor, he said, stretching. When I do stretching exercises or some movements, uh, feels good for him. He feel confident and active. Okay. Does he have a fear of moment? Fear of moment, highly. Yes. Fear towards that moment. What about the psychosocial factor? The psychosocial factor was uh, disturbed, definitely. Young age, having a lot of stiffness and pain, he came with a lot of worry. Financially, highly low background. And uh, mainly, the reason here is almost he spent a lakh or more than the, for these treatments and visiting doctors. And uh, almost he visited four orthopedicians, two rheumatologists, four physiotherapists. Highly disturbed due to pain because he needs to take care of the future life uh, goal at the age of 22 in some family, uh, mother and uh, father expecting him to go for work, next step of life. So highly psychologically disturbed. What about his mobility? Mobility is normal. Everything. How he says it as stiff? 
he was say, he was internal thought that i am feeling stiff there is no particular test to to assess the stiffness right so yeah i can assess the mobility and flexibility uh, if it, it was reduced we can consider that it could be a stiffness but it was normal and here we have to understand one important factor what is stiffness and what is tightness it's a uh, it also the perceived experience what the person perceive because even i have seen the people who can able to bend and touch the toes completely they may complain i have stiff uh, hamstring stiff posterior uh, back regions the people who doesn't able to till uh, reach the knee they may have i'm free i'm i'm not having any stiffness so the feeling stiff and uh, feeling tight also could be the perception of the patient what they perceive as a pain kind of what we perceive as a stiffness can be a stiffness too so according to the person that is a stiffness it can be isolately determined by the mobility and flexibility test right always but when i check mobility flexibility it was completely normal overhead squat forward flexion shoulder mobility everything was so normal neck movement range of motion everything was good perfectly normal sir how was this uh, the breathing pattern ah uh, breathing pattern when we observe uh, there was he was more of a using upper chest breathing not having a relaxed uh, breathing so already he has the high fear of movement psychosocial factor disturbance upper chest breath uh, usage so everything was correlated so you have told that he is having sound in uh, ankle and all so is there any relation between the stiffness and the sound did you check that no how to check that so maybe there is uh, any specification is there there is a pro- joint joint noise and uh, stiffness relationship it's not actually so maybe we can do as we did mobility and flexibility testing so we can also do the strength test so there is a correlation between the sound and stiffness as a strength strength testing if the muscles are uh, if stiff muscles also considered as a weak muscle right so we can do that when i do that both side was normal there's no side to side difference and also it's not that big break test when i do break test it's not that big actually both are same right and right left, and left uh, both are same and you don't have a isolated one side pain first of all but both side also looks there is no difference and uh, both side pretty much good according to me uh, my experience when i do break test it was normal is he having any radiating symptoms no what are the activities that he restrict due to this pain every activity he stop riding bike If stop going walk one place another place you stop everything actually so so much uh, quality of life yeah quality of life is highly compromised in last two years sir as you told he has visited two rheumatologist doctor so did uh, they suggested something like immunity related yeah issues. good question yeah that's the reason the movements makes him better and rest makes worse the pain and there is a no night pain in early morning sleep. but still it was can correlated by move aggravating relieving factor was related to the rheumatological uh, conditional situation so orthopedician suggested to rheumatologist and two rheumatologist he visited all the test blood test was normal and this is a antibody ra factor even he took hlb 27 mri everything is normal everything is normal c reactive protein esr so everything is normal was there any pain during palpation no there is no pain in specifically i palpate the trapezius paraspinal muscles because most of the different area and the knee also i palpate the rectus and uh, posterior chain but there is no pain during palpation sir everything was normal mobility flexibility stability hmm. strength everything was normal there is no stiffness and what's the diagnosis that yeah. is also normal <laughs> okay fine so uh, i came to a conclusion after uh, speaking to him of 20 30 minutes so very simply his pain was uh, when uh, we don't know exact root cause of the pain when he two years before start of pain the back pain and neck pain it can be anything in the world everyone's get pain uh, believing that if i have pain i have structural damage also is wrong according to me so we exclude that part he may any reason he get pain discomfort at the age of uh, 20 21 uh, two years before first time he visited one orthopedician right first time he visited one doctor right so his pain was this much his pain was this much first doctor visit they said some uh, diagnostical languages or something and you don't move please take rest for a month or two months or something after that his pain was this much as a person character as a person he was having a lot of fear 
lot of fear and uh, just passed out going to be passed out college what was the future questionable what was the future questionable uh, what i'm going to say to my family questionable what i'm going to study in future questionable so many psychological factor leads to worsen the pain more maybe maybe i'm concerned this the pain this much goes to this much pain goes to this much after visiting of uh, four orthopedician uh, two rheumatologist taking hla v27 mri so many test uh, and increasing the fear and worries and this much pain goes to this much goes to this much and you could you don't believe i was specifically written what he said uh, the hin words uh, he said what he came and he didn't explain first of all i have back pain and neck pain he started with i have a degenerative disc disease degenerative disc disease postural abnormality postural abnormality i have a knot formation in this neck and uh, back region and i have a knee inward I, my knee is moving inward feet is going outward and i move this was the fourth thing he explained as soon as i asked what was your complaint and i asked him first ever you got the pain right and you visited the doctor did you say the doctor i have a knot formation i have degenerative disease after the diagnosis after they explain this was your problem only you got to know you have this right before that you don't know you have a knot formation or a, you have portion of volume your knee is going in but you don't know this right just tell me what is your problem not to see your diagnosis i told then he explained me i have a neck stiffness back stiffness knee and the ankle so there was producing so this much pain started with this much pain and slowly progressed and pain came to this much over diagnosis more pain fear due to so many diagnosis so many medical test patient had a fear more pain stop doing any activity every activity fear avoidance leads to this much pain goes to this much okay now how the pain started this much now he had a pain of this much with all the medical procedure all the misdiagnosis fear avoidance and uh, self uh, character of the person is uh, highly worried and situation of the person is financially and uh, psychologically was very low leads to pain this much and you can look at it two years before he said we don't know but he said i'm very active i'm going to gym and running and everything now he stopped doing even riding a bike and running and everything so we can consider his physical fitness level was this much before in this two years it came to this much physical conditioning is goes down right ability is goes down right as well as this fear so many mistake you notice know, increase the pain also no one explained him no one explained him positively that was my biggest concern what i diagnosed finally it was a complex pain it was a complex pain with the person character had a lot of fear lot of fear see immediately passing out the college what was the future worries and pain doctor said you should not move so many things happen to him mri so this degenerative disease and uh, go and take this blood test go and take hlb27 cost of hlb27 is very high why the doctor is asking to go do this test young age person may, may he have googled it everything and what google says anything positively no definitely no even though results comes negatively stored in the mind these are all the things increase the pain complex of the pain complexity of the pain complex pain syndrome i concluded chronic pain leads to chronic pain with abnormal sensory processing your your brain believes your body in danger it tend to overdo and protect your body to produce more pain that's what actually happened to him and we treated two to three weeks now third week is going on uh, third week is going on where he was successfully walking and he was comfortably riding bike and coming everything was good what was the difficulty you faced while treating this patient ah uh difficulty space i know but uh, better uh, this question can answered by immanuel because immanuel treated him past two three weeks so he can answer this question better way uh, so what, what is uh, felt uh, the difficulty thing is he had more fear of movement and he was uh, he have more doubts whether his pain will be reduced or not so on every time he last uh, he, he last the reason why you are giving this exercise and uh, for uh, will uh, doing this exercise uh, the pain will be reduced how long it will be it will be temporary or permanent yeah he he last question on every time in every session that i face is uh, uh, and then we did exactly is uh, he had a fear to ride bike what if increase the sickness fear of running what we list down the activity that uh, what are all the things he couldn't able to do what are all things he wants to do and we made into an exercise 
If you ask him uh, after five, six days, if your friend, anyone is having a bike, uh, take their bike and come cleaning through bike and go by. Start riding the bike. Yeah, he said, yeah, I'm riding the bike. I don't feel much discomfort. In so we made into all the negative things into a positive way. And we made him realize that he was normal. No one have pain. Just go back and uh, look into whatever you want to do. And one more important thing he was said, uh, first week uh, to take a bus, he was trying to run four or five steps uh, without knowing himself. And he said, ah, I was run, I don't have pain. So basically, the positive reinforcement, what we give, we break that uh, fear cycle. That was the thing which we did. Sir, what was the insight you got from the patient? Learning, learning, okay. The learning from the patient is uh, pretty much simple because uh, with our experience of past and of years in this clinic, we are seeing this kind of cases uh, very frequently, this kind of patients. Uh, the learning, if you ask, listen to the patient is the key. Listening to their concern, uh, financial background, psychosocial factor, and why they got pain. Um, language of which we use from which to the patient, everything is placed major role. That was our learning. Sir, so do you think that uh, treating the aggravating factor is uh, helpful in this patient? Definitely, because uh, not only this case, uh, treating the aggravating factor is a very, very important component. As a physiotherapist, you are looking and treating only the pain, 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 always the pain. Patient comes to your clinic with two reasons. I couldn't able to move. If when I try to move, I have pain. I have pain, so I couldn't able to move. The moment and pain always interplay between each other. You have to address the moment. You only if you treat the pain, for example, for him, had a back pain, couldn't able to do activities like uh, running, bike riding. If we didn't ask him to do that, be safe, don't run, you may end up having some injury. If he still continues to do that, do you think he will, he will, his pain will going to improve? You apply some modality, you do some releasing. You may be, he may feel temporary relief of pain, but the pain comes back again. The pain comes back again. Treating the aggravating factor, graded exposure to that movement and breaking the fear cycle is the key. So, even the back pain case comes to you, forward bending is difficulty. The patient bend forward without pain is a successful treatment. It's not only that patient doesn't have pain, it's a successful treatment. Patient have pain and couldn't able to bend forward. You are not, if you are not bringing back the quality of life, the treatment is not successful always. And we are made the patient to think that you have to move this safely hereafter. If you have, don't have pain, you are improved. That was an attitude of the every physiotherapist, I feel. So that cycle we have to break. What movement makes them more pain if that movement doesn't make them pain? Your treatment is successful. Hope this case presentation helps to improve your clinical practice. If you like this video, share this video with your physiotherapy community. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. If you have any queries, uh, you can comment below. So it will be helpful to improve this clinical presentation with more uh, interesting in upcoming videos. And come on, let's learn together. Yeah, okay.